Hello there, my name is Jeff lopez Stite, and the name of my company is Improvement School, and I wanted to share with you a technique for visualizing impediments at the Scaled Daily Scrum as a method for speeding up decision making according, across a large release. So to set the, set the context here for a minute, we're, we're working with a large global transportation manufacturer in the mobility division of that large manufacturer. So this is just one division of a much larger company. This division was just starting to implement Scrum with a small number of teams. So they hadn't had a lot of experience with Scrum at this point, but the leadership asked us for assistance on how can we start to apply some of these scaling techniques to a large re release right now. Now traditionally in this organization, they had spent thousands of person hours in planning and status meetings because they were using a very waterfallish process, very huge releases along a long time period and thousands of hours getting, getting ready and doing status meetings during the course of the development. Even with all that upfront planning and all that statusing during the development, traditionally in this organization, releases were weeks and sometimes months late. And on top of that, the release process was so laborious that it took a month long just to release it. And staff members were asked to actually stay in hotel rooms near the corporate offices so they could be available 24 by 7 if something came up or there was a problem to solve during the release process. So uh, the, as I said, the leadership asked us, what can we do to help them using some of these techniques right away? And we saw an immediate opportunity in applying the techniques of Scrum of Scrums and the scaled daily Scrum meeting um, to what they were doing. So we're starting to work with a lot of different teams, even though a lot of them haven't even started working with Scrum. We're working with teams that are using waterfall techniques and, and, and that were vendors. And we saw an opportunity to start visualizing a lot of what they were doing. So visual ra radiators had been an essential po component of Scrum right from the very origin. And so we were looking for ways to in retain these practices around visualization within Scrum of Scrums. So we, the techniques we came up with were the, to bring people together into a st scale daily Scrum meeting, focusing on four questions. What has your team done since the last time we met? What are we gonna do before the next time? And has our team put something in the way, something in the way of the other team, another team? Along with that, has another team put something in our way? And I'll show you how we apply this in the, in the form of something we call the impediment board. Here's a very basic impediment board. You can see there's a swim lane for each one of the teams and just a line across the middle. And above the line, above the line, we put where is one team blocking another right now through a dependency or something missing or some block communication, where is one team holding up another and preventing them from working? And below the line, we're asking the teams to look ahead two to three sprints, say four to six weeks, and saying, where can you see where your, another team is gonna be blocking you, or where, where are we gonna be blocking another team? And so you can see the game we're trying to play here is to prevent the post-its under the line from moving up above the line and actually be, bl being, becoming real impediments from one team to another. So if we move back to our case study here, um, so this, uh, when we started working with them, the senior program manager in, char in, in charge of the release uh, acted as the Scrum of Scrums master, and he declared basically anything in the backlog right now across this program is a potential impediment. And so we asked all these teams to visualize everything at this point. Uh, we had a dedicated room, 24 by seven video, and the scaled daily Scrum meeting was required, not just from all the teams, but all from all the vendors involved in the release. Now you can see this got pretty involved pretty quickly. You, this was at its height, we had 23 teams involved. Uh, at the bottom of that, that, large, that, that large board was the backlog, uh, this, the current backlog for all the release. Any work in progress that was, that was currently being worked on by teams, even if they were scrum or not, uh, there was in the middle. And if there was anything blocking, one team blocking another, we put that on top. Uh, so even with 20 plus, tr t plus teams, the scaled daily scrum only lasted about 20 minutes because we fo focused on the four questions. Everybody was required to, attend, required to attend and focus that and we got through the scaled daily scrum in about 20 minutes. 
And just by having these visual cues for the first time in this organization, people could see, could see how, they were how they were related and they were blocking each other. Uh, we used, used little avatars to focus in on things that were either blocking now or potential blocks in the future. And here's one of these things in action. You can only see a subset of the people there. In reality, either on video or in person, there are probably over 20 people in the room right there. For the collection of teams, you see the Scrum of Scrum Masters in the middle. You also see a vice president there. Uh, executives shared with us that this was the first time in their history that they had actually gotten an honest, honest report of what was going on in the release uh, instead of re re relying on status reports. So the results of this is for the first time in years, a release actually happened on time. The hotel rooms were gone. We had enough, enough coordination and enough visibility up front that we, that we worked through a lot of these impediments that would, before that would only come up during the actual process of release. So the release happened smoother. We eliminated thousands of person hours spent in planning. And as I mentioned before, the executives for the first time got an honest visualization of what was going on in a release in an organization. That's all, thank you. Uh, to clarify on the, your swim lanes, you said the swim lanes were the teams, but then you said the swim lanes were above and below, were blo uh, current or future blockers? Can yeah, let's go, let's look bit? at the simple edition. Yeah, that's right. Okay, the swim lanes were vertical. The swim lanes, okay, those are columns. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's sorry about that. Me. Yeah, so in, in that rendition, each one of those represents a team. Okay, yeah, I was talking about the, the previous swim one lanes. you had. The yeah, previous oh, say, that was the same, okay. same thing in that in That, that clarified thing. it. I thought the swim, the swim lanes, so the columns were teams, yeah. swim lanes were current and future backlog item, back uh, blockers, right? Yeah, I use okay. swim lanes in a different context. Yeah. But I interpreted it that way. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for clarifying that. I'll, thank you. That's something I'll work on. Thank you. Uh, so I noticed you have the one big board. So is it uh, like 20 teams uh, using yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And let me let me just say right now, if you're just starting to implement Scrum at scale in an organization, I wouldn't recommend you do a scaled daily Scrum with 20 teams. Right? We know that even at the scaled daily Scrum meeting, seven and nine. This was a request by a by a big organization just starting out with Scrum, saying, "How can we use these techniques right now?" And so we and I had an opportunity, and before we knew it, it had taken off and gotten so popular that more and more teams started adding it when the program manager saw that it was working so well. So is this um, uh, 20 teams uh, in different uh, daily uh, scrums updating that board, the same board? Is that the idea yeah, there? Yeah, they were all updating that same board. That was one thing that the, the Scrum of Scrum Masters, the program manager for this program, required. Uh, and he had, and he had a, another scrum master assisting him, that actually went around and made sure people updated it. We're, so all of the teams are co-located. Um, you had a few vendors that would call in. That's why we had live twenty-four by seven video in, in in the room. So they were all co-located. I could say they were all in the same geographic, general geographic region of of the home office, but they weren't all in that building. It's so important, though, if you do have people who are not co-located to make sure that you've got those virtual spaces yeah, that are open up. Yeah, I would so say you, if you plan like on doing something like this, it still has to be a face-to-face -face meeting. I still have to be able to see the people on the other end. Absolutely. All right, thank you.